Hey everyone, it's Tim. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I am a fantasy and sci-fi author. I have authored the uh, Dragon in the White series and the forthcoming children's book, Good Night Phobos, Good Night Deimos, uh, which is a children's bedtime story set on Mars. Uh, today we're jumping back onto the Great Bookstore uh, tour of New England. This is going to be stop number three. We're going down to um, Chandler Street in Worcester and we're going to go visit Tidepool Bookshop. Uh, so stay tuned and let's go check out and talk to uh, Joe and Huck. Hi, welcome down to Tidepool Bookshop. Um, my name is Tim Baird. I'm here today with Joe and Huck Truesdell, and uh, we are at 372 Chandler Street. And today I wanna learn as much as I can about Tidepool Bookshop and tell all you video watchers about uh, why you should come down and what you can expect when you get here. So Joe and Huck, thank you very much for having me. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Appreciate it, thank you. All right, so I want to learn a little bit more about this beautiful bookstore that you have. I, I love the brick, the exposed beams. This is a great looking place. I can already imagine bringing my five-year-old son and my wife with me to come pick out some new books. So let's learn a bit, a little bit more about what makes this place so special. So why is Tidepool Bookshop so special and why should a customer come down to your store? Well, you know, I think one of the things about independent bookstores in general is that each independent bookstore is special because they're different from, right. from one another, you mm -hmm. know, and that's what, what uh, you know, sort of is the, the trademark of independent bookstores. So you can go from one to another and you'll have a, a, a different experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really great. And I hope, we hope that the experience that you have when you come here mm -hmm. is one that is, um, um, you know, unique and fun. And yeah. I don't know, we have... Uh, we have a full range of books for... Mm -hmm for uh, adults and children uh, and uh, we're, we're new books not not used yeah. books mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, and we have a, a, a children that children when they come they'll find a little a little doorway that they can go through to uh, uh to the children's section which is kind of fun mm -hmm. and uh and that's one thing that's been sort of fun is uh children when we started seeing uh repeat customers last fall kids we always knew when they had been here before because the kids would would come in and just make a beeline <laughs> for the doorway so that was fun so yeah it's just uh um you know just and we, we love this space yeah. it just mm -hmm. feels just Absolutely. right for a bookstore yep. Absolutely. yeah yeah that was the first thing i noticed when i came in because you'll never find that at a barnes and noble or something because it would impede traffic people couldn't bring a shopping cart in there if they wanted to right. but it's perfect for a kid to just run right in yep. And um, I can already imagine my son ducking right in there the first time he comes in. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really cool. <laughs> um, so speaking of that, what age group does Tidepool Bookshop cater to? Do you try to just be a kid store? Are you trying to be an adult store? Are you trying to make it all encompassing to any visitor that comes nearby? Definitely, um, we cater to everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, we do have a fairly healthy uh, uh, children's section, but, um, but definitely uh, we cater to uh, all ages. And one of the things that we try to do is to do some cross, like you'll see if you were looking around the adult section, you may see some children's books in there as well. Um, you know, I think we have some children's poetry books and with poetry and we have some uh, bird books in uh, children's bird books and with the uh, 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 yeah. birds um, you know and the reason for that is so that even if a, a adult has come in without a child they might be inspired to mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to uh, buy buy some of these children's books and so we like that cross we like Adults and children sometimes to be able to um, have common ground on a, mm -hmm. on a on a topic and things. So, yeah. you know. And our book selection process and uh, involves a lot of what what we are hearing from our customers in terms yeah. of what they would like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. we uh, so yeah. customers of all ages come into the store yeah. and, and yeah. 
order books. We take a lot of special orders mm -hmm. for uh, books that mm -hmm. we don't happen to have in stock. So right. Yeah. So it yeah. works out really well. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole new ball game for us. We, mm -hmm. we, I was a kindergarten teacher for 41 years. And, and I worked in land conservation. Yeah. yeah. And so when we retired, um, there were no... I mean, the only uh, bookstores in the, you know, Annie's Book Stop is here, and um, and then at Barnes and Noble, but that was uh, that was it. And so, um, having grown up in Worcester, we had, you know, there were so many bookstores mm -hmm. in Worcester, and it was always sort of this, you know, this wonderful went from one to the other, and they were all different and whatnot. And so we thought that um, that. Uh, that maybe we might be able to fill that niche. Yep. And so a we, city uh, like Worcester really needs independent bookstores. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there's so many colleges no. and yeah. universities and you know, a growing population. I think at that time there were 180,000 people and I think they're probably even a little more now. And um, and so, uh, but you know, with gray haired people, it takes a long time. We had a lot to learn <laughs> about how to, uh, uh, um, you know, what it took to, to oh, open yeah. a bookstore. That's a lot of work. And it did. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so in the meantime, it was great that uh, that uh, Bedlam Bookstore opened and then Written Press opened and whatnot. And so I was like, okay, what do we, what do, we do? But we're so delighted mm -hmm. to uh, be a part of that um, uh, growing uh, group of independent bookstores in, in, um, in Worcester in the area. And it's, it's great. Yeah. So. And that's entertainment, is it? And that's entertainment. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Is a, is a bookstore also? It's a great exactly. bookstore. Exactly. They have a huge selection exactly. of graphic novels and comic books. Mm -hmm. Right. They were actually the first stop on my uh, my book tour for the series. Awesome. Because you may awesome. think of them as just like a gaming store where right. a bunch of nerds hang out, including me. <laughs> um, but they have a lot of good story writing in graphic novels yeah. that sometimes exactly. people say it's like, oh, it's just a comic book. Right. It's it's so much more than that, exactly. and it but it's definitely a different audience. Right. You know, your books yeah. uh, store shoppers here might not want graphic novels, yeah. so that's why it's kind of neat to right. break up. And right. Right. it's cool that you brought that up. Do you find that you have a good relationship with the other bookstore owners in Worcester? Do you guys network together? And exactly, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, definitely. And we, yeah, we, we certainly plan to do more of that. Yep. In, right. in the future. Exactly. All right, very cool. We have we have been, and um, in these COVID times, though, we haven't gotten together. We've gotten together with with. Uh, with them before, uh, before COVID struck, when we were with really thinking that we were actually going to open yeah. uh, in March of 2020, and uh, but uh, but yeah, so I think that connection with the other bookstore owners mm -hmm. is huge and is very has been really helpful to us too. So, oh, very uh, cool. You know, so yeah. Indeed, yeah. And so you guys are telling me that you worked careers your whole lives, mm -hmm. and then after you were done, when you should have just sat on the couch and put your feet up, you decided to open a bookstore because you love yeah. reading and books that much yeah. that you wanted to bring that to the community? You know, that's interesting. We do love reading mm -hmm. that much, and um, but what we really do is love Worcester. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it was all about. We weren't going to, um, it wasn't about opening a bookstore. Mm -hmm. It was about opening a bookstore in Worcester, yeah, and uh, and I think that's a, a really crucial uh, part of it. And um, and uh, you know we, we care about the city and we you know want it to thrive. And at that time, mm -hmm. you know, again, you know, there, there there weren't a lot of independent bookstores at that time. Um, uh, it just felt as though that was a huge missing piece, mm -hmm. you know. Then Franklin had closed and. Tatnick had closed and and yeah, uh, I grew up going to Tatnick Bookstore. Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly, and uh, and uh, and so um, so yeah, so it just it was it's really about Worcester, you mm -hmm. know, uh, yeah. having uh, you know, that's right, right. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, and so we did the day after we retired. It was like you know we we were thinking, okay, so what what next? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do during retirement? And um, and uh, but then and that just I don't know the two kind of coincided right, right? The, sitting yeah. on the couch was not an option mm -hmm. yes <laughs> right <laughs> oh, boy that sounds not, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> now that you bring it up <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. so when you go through your process of um, acquiring new books and you go through your vetting process trying to pick what you want to stock on your shelves because you only have so much shelf space. Mm -hmm. What kind of products do you typically look for and what ends up making it to the shelf for the customers to take a look at? Right. That's a, the answer. I mean, that's a big question because there's yep. a whole lot uh, involved in it. But of course, any anything um, 
uh, that we uh, read reviews from the, the American Booksellers Association, Indie Next, and whatnot, mm -hmm. came out to read, uh, read those. We have publishers um, who are sales reps who will yeah. get in touch with us, and they, they often have vetted the um, books that are coming out, um, you know, the, the new, you know, the forthcoming books and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so they do a lot of vetting, and then we'll look at, at what their picks, what they think would be good for this bookstore, you mm -hmm. know, because they get, and yeah. of course we're new, so it's not, you know, you're still sort of, you know, treading around and seeing what are people, you know, what, what do we have? And that's mm -hmm. an exciting time, actually, yeah. you know. And that's but, what you'll know over the next couple of years, what you're you're catering to, exactly, yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And we learn so many, as you say to our customers all the time, you know, I'm going to steal that, you know, when they've ordered a book mm -hmm. that we don't have, you know, we'll look at it and see if it might be something that we'd like to have on our bookshelf. And, you know, often it is. Mm -hmm. And so we, yeah. we, but we do tell them that we've stolen their idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, um, yeah. There's a lot of books out there. Yep. Yeah, there are a lot of great, great books. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. there are. To choose from. And you, and you have to, and you do have to choose, you know. We now are, are pretty much doing, um, you know, we're not, we're not, we are not buying books for the fall right now. Most, most independent bookstores would be doing that right now, but mm -hmm. we're still in that, in that period of, of, of just trying to figure out mm -hmm. um, what, what our customers are, are yep. looking for. And so, you know, so we'll, that, you know, it'll probably take, you know, yeah. probably next year we'll start doing that, mm -hmm. you know, forthcoming books and whatnot. But, uh, but we're still, you know, certainly keying into it. And of course all, you know, looking at all times, bookseller, everything, so. Yep. So it's good. But we don't have as much time to read as we used to. Yeah. You know, that's one thing. It's so funny. Now we read more reviews than we do books. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, uh, but it's great. Yeah. Okay. No, but I know when I walked in, I saw you have a little bit of everything. Like we're yeah. standing in front of thrillers and general fiction. You know, there's, yeah. there's books on here that I've read myself and I see a bunch of awesome kids books. So yeah. it seems like if anybody comes in is just a general reader, or especially if they have children, they're going to find a book that they're yeah. probably interested in reading. Some, so. Someone came in, one of the first people that came in, actually, I remember last, when we sort of opened kind of around Labor Day, you know, we were doing curbside pickup and doing some stuff beforehand, but then in, in uh, around Labor Day, we opened up, and one of the first customers came in, and she said, I've read half these books, and I'm, the other half are books I want to read, mm -hmm. and, and we thought, Excellent. You know, that just sounded, it, 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 that yeah. was good. You yep. know, it just sort of, maybe, we, maybe this is a good start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so um, I know you guys opened during a very weird time. So this might be kind of an odd answer, but what events have you done in the past year mm -hmm. um, in the age of COVID and having to adapt to doing things remotely? And then once things clear up, what kind of events are you interested in doing uh, to host here for the community to come in and check out? Right, right. So we've done, uh, uh, we've been doing events over Zoom. We mm -hmm. started in May, I th I, yeah, I think last May. Um, yeah, a year ago. Um, uh, starting, you know, doing, uh, doing events uh, over Zoom. That was funny, uh, but that's been continuing. That's been wonderful. I mean, mm -hmm. It's been great to have uh, to have that opportunity. We're really grateful, and it may be something that we may continue to do because we've been having one of our authors was in Mexico. You know, yeah. I mean, you can and, and our and the people who come to the Zoom events are from all over the world. So, yeah. so you know, there's some positives to that. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing Zoom story time. So that's funny, uh, you know, but I'm loving it, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, but, um, but we really can't wait. Yeah. And, and events in the store was yeah. really a big part of our business plan right. when, mm -hmm. when we were right. putting it together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we were obviously going to plan to have regular author talks, book signings, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we also had an idea of doing some event every Friday in the early evening, like at six o'clock or something else, so people could come out of work, stop by the bookstore for mm -hmm. some kind of a brief talk and some refreshments. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, uh, you know, that aspect of the business plan went out the window. For now. For, for now. now. Yeah. Right. But we look forward but to as, starting that. Yep. As things open up, then we will definitely be doing that. Yeah, because yeah, uh, I can tell you, if really there is an really author I'm interested in and you have a 6 p.m. after work thing, yep. I would love to come here Hear about it, buy a book, 
yep. going to Nancy Chang's, right. get some takeout, exactly. go home and start my weekend exactly. right. That, right. You know, and that was really what the what the intent is, mm -hmm. and and, um, and yeah. so it sounds. And we good. designed the space to accommodate. The right. Group. Yeah, that's what I like. It's exactly. it's very open in the middle, yeah. which you know, if you're just trying to look to only sell product, it might be a waste of space. You yep. could put yep. more bookshelves there. Exactly. But it's exactly. so great. Like all you gotta do is just move that table and that thing yeah. in the middle, these, and bam, you have all this open area right. to put chairs right. up and yep. stuff. And right. these so. these uh, bookcases are actually on wheels. So, so oh, so cool. Actually are on those. So we can actually yeah. hold a lot of people. So that's great. So it is, and you're right. It's yeah. A, it's a flexible space. And um and uh, and uh, yeah so yeah we hope we look forward to it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So for these Zoom events, how would um, the average viewer watching this video right now? How would they find one of these Zoom events that you're hosting? So they yeah I mean we we put it on our on our um, we have a newsletter that doesn't come out too too often but it comes out you know uh, you know to, whatever, to our mailing periodic, list. To our mm -hmm. mailing list. And then on, it's always up on our website. Okay. And we um, put it up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And soon we're going to learn how to do Instagram also. <laughs> so we have some, some um, um, high school students who are, who are doing a co-op with us uh, for the next few weeks. And, uh, and so they, they're going to teach us how to do Instagram. Yeah. That's so. cool. Yeah, they're going to try to teach they're us gonna, how to you know, try to teach something. If you can do Facebook, you can do Instagram. That, You'll be that's fine. What everybody keeps saying. I yeah. don't know. We'll see. So what I'll do is I'll in the description uh, below this video, I'll link your website and all your other contact info awesome. so that people can find uh, the awesome. information to come check it out. Awesome. Um, so before I let everybody go, is there anything else that you'd like to add in? Uh, something I didn't cover that you want to tell the people, let them sink in their brains? No. Yeah. No, it's just, uh, we're really, really happy to be here. Yeah. So really. Yeah. We're happy to have you. Tremendous positive feedback from yeah. people who come to the store yeah right. and, and i think from all over the community yeah. and the surrounding towns too yeah. mm -hmm. and i think that uh one of the things that has um you know um this community of um uh yeah, worcester community is a really go local community mm -hmm. people care about yeah. the community they know what it means to shop at a local um uh business and they know that when they shop at a local business the money stays in the mm -hmm. city right. and i think that this you know worcester is so great with that you know mm -hmm. what's your what's your residents understand that and um so we have it's you can buy books online but people like to come into a bookstore yeah. and mm -hmm. pick up a book and hold it and yep. Yep. look at it yep yeah so and so that uh, yeah and it's kind of you know it's played out that's what we were banking on you know uh and i mean the the, the group the population in worcester that's growing um the most as i understand it is sort of the 20 30 40 year olds and and they've been here they come they you know and that's a that's a really um you know go local group mm -hmm. right and uh and so and they do they care so much about the community and then the in the, all the colleges and universities and mm -hmm. whatnot, so so we've we've really benefited a lot from um, you know from people you know caring about the city. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. And <laughs> the latter demographic you mentioned, you know, I remember being a college student here in Worcester. Yep. I didn't have a car. I didn't have money. Exactly. I walked everywhere I went. Exactly. And you guys are within easy walking distance oh of a bunch God. of schools. Oh, yeah. So for somebody living here in exactly. Worcester. It's, it's perfect. And, yeah. you know, even if you do drive, there's a gigantic parking lot yeah. next door. Yeah. There's a bunch of other stores nearby. There's great reasons to come here and park and just walk around for a bit and shop. Yeah. And I admittedly buy lots of things online, yep. but you don't get that same experience of walking in right. and picking a book up in your hand and reading the back and right. finding something right. you right. like, yep. or going up to one of you two and being like, you know, I like this author and this author and this kinds of books, but I'm yep. looking for something new. Right. What do you recommend? What do you, recommend? Yeah. you can't get that in a search bar on Amazon. You can't. Yeah. And I think that, that you often talk about the discovery mm -hmm. aspect yeah. in a, you know, that that it's not so much, you know, uh, you know, coming in, knowing what you want and getting it. Mm -hmm. It's really just that, you know, just that, thing, which is like what a tide pool is, mm -hmm. you know? And so that, you know, I mean that, you know, here's that surface, but it's all what's below the surface mm -hmm. that yeah. where you're going to find those really cool things. And, and that's sort of what, what coming into a bookstore mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is all about. And, and uh, so we hope that people will come yeah. and, right. uh, and discover. Right? <laughs> right. And actually you mentioned uh, graphic uh, uh, novels too. That's one of the things things that you know earlier when we were talking about um uh, uh that's entertainment is that 
you know, one of the decisions that we made with, um, with graphic novels is to put them right in with all of our other, we don't have a section mm -hmm. on graphic, but we have graphic novels. But what we want is people, again, it's a discovery, you know, people who are interested in graphic novels, you know, if it's side by side with a more traditional book, they may say, oh, I think I'm going to try that. And vice versa, people yep. who are, you know, drawn to traditional books yep. may see a graphic novel and think, I think I'm going to give that a try. So again, it's all about, um, and, and you, you don't do that online. Mm -hmm. You know, you go, you know, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so we're, we're psyched. Anyway. Yeah. All right, that's so, cool. Good. Well, Joe and Huck, thank you very much for having me today. I loved coming down and checking out your bookstore. Um, so as you're watching, uh, we're at Tidepool Bookshop on 372 Chandler Street here in Worcester. Um, as they mentioned, you can buy on their website and do curbside pickup if you like, if you're still worried about everything going on with COVID-19. If you want to come in, uh, masks are required, but it's a great open bookstore. There's plenty of free room to move around. You don't have to worry about being too close to people. Um, and it's a great experience. So I highly recommend you come on down, check out the store, and and I had a blast and I'll be here soon with my family. Well, so we really, really appreciate you yes. so right, cool. much. And we welcome everybody and anybody to come in, but we really thank you for uh, for doing it. Oh, it's happy to be here. Right. Uh, happy, right. Love being a part of the uh, independent bookstore community here yeah. in Worcester. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much the viewer for uh, joining us today. And I look forward to seeing you on the next stop on the bookstore tour. All right, thanks, bye. bye. <laughs>